next quality that Peter says that we're to add to our character list is that we're to add to our perseverance godliness. 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8 says, discipline yourself for the purpose of being godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better because it promises benefits in this life, but also in the life to come. So again, physical discipline in life is important. Physical perseverance is important, but even better to discipline yourself or persevere in a godly life because that brings eternal life. How do we become godly people? That's what I want to talk about in this category. To me, godliness is the aspect really of seeking intimacy with God, being close to God. I'm not going to talk here about what godliness is because it's, it's all these seven things and many more. I want to talk about how does a person become godly. And there's really one primary way that you become godly in life, and that is by spending time with God. Now, why is that true? It's because we become like those we spend time with. And we also become like those we love. The way to become Christ-like and to become like God is to make it a priority to spend personal time with Him. Now, on a personal level, we can do that in a, two different ways. The first one is make prayer a priority in your life. Because prayer is a primary means to intimacy with God. It's us primarily talking to God, kind of by definition. Make prayer a priority. Want to become godly? Spend time with God. What's, what's a great way to do that? Talk to Him. Pray. I want to give a number of points related to prayer that I've kind of learned in my own life. The first one is we need to learn to pray all the time. To pray all the time. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. Be always talking to God. I like to do that when I go on airplanes and at a whole bunch of different places. Talking to God all the time. A running conversation with the one who loves us. Number two, we should also have special places or a place that we go for prayer. How about prayer habit? We have, a, we have a place where we can have quality time with God. In Mark 1, 35, it talks about Jesus getting up early in the morning and going to a lonely place to have time with His Father. Now, the Bible also teaches He talks to the Father all the time, but He knew He needed quality time in a place. And in my own life, I've always had a place or places I could have a date with God on a regular basis. For me right now, it's in a, it's in a basement office where I get up in the morning, go down, and try to have quality time with God every day in a place where I kind of meet with Him. The Bible also talks about, number three, the importance of scheduling kind of a regular prayer time. That's a good, that's a good habit. Not only pray all the time and have a place to go, but kind of a, a regular, some people call this a quiet time, a prayer time with God. The, the normal time in the Bible actually is morning, which is what Jesus did, Mark 1, 35. Again, when it was early morning, it was still dark, the Bible says. He went out and he prayed to His Father. That's the norm in Scripture, is morning. Now, for some of you, that means after midnight. You're kind of wired that way, right? So it doesn't really matter, but it's a matter of, again, morning seems to be best because people are sleeping, it's not busy, it's, uh, it's quiet. <clears throat> and if it's you know, the beginning of your day, it's, it's uh, kind of starting with God first. Another thing, number four, that I want to mention here is the Bible indicates not only to have a good place, time, do it all the time, but maybe the best habit in prayer is to have three prayer times a day. <clears throat> which is why the Jews developed three primary hours of prayer in their calendar over many years. This was the habit of Daniel's life, Daniel 6.10. Got on his knees three times a day facing Jerusalem, Daniel 6.10. And David said the same thing, Psalm 55.17. Evening, that's one. Morning and noon, I will, pry and, I will cry and pray aloud. He will hear my voice. In the same way that we kind of have three meals a day, you know, it's kind of a good idea to get some nourishment in the morning, you know? And then when you run out in the middle of the day, you know, kind of fit in something there, kind of grab some nourishment there, and then before you go to bed, you know? And of course, that changes in your life because you can do one thing when you're single and another when you're married and then when you have kids. And so, I mean, patterns change, but it's a great idea, the kind of the idea of I, I have a primarily a morning quiet time. I try to stick in something in the middle of the day, and then I also like to talk with God before I go to bed. So it's just, a, again, a good habit that, keeps me more tied to God. The, the fifth point I want to mention under prayer is the idea of being committed to a balanced, broad topic prayer life. A balanced, broad topic prayer life. My experience with most believers is 
We pray for our families and we pray for those who are sick. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are all wonderful and very natural. But there are tons of other things that God wants us to pray for, including nations, world evangelism, for kings, for all people, for the church. We actually have produced in our organization a book that's called a, a Prayer Diary that actually helps you organize your prayer life on a seven-day basis. And I, I just learned years ago, I don't want to pray shallow. I don't want to pray small. I, I want to learn to pray for all the things God wants me to talk to him about because he's always looking for intercessors, you know, the Bible teaches. And there are many tools we can use that help with that. So broad prayer life, deeper prayer life, little tools that are used to do it. A man named Robert Murray McShane, who only lived to be 29, but was a great Scottish preacher, said what a person is on his knees before God, that's what he is, nothing more. What a person is on their knees before God, that's what they are, nothing more. Again, back to our inquisitive minds, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, I think it means that basically your prayer life is probably the truest spiritual barometer of how you're doing. We can fake everything else. <laughs> That's hard to fake prayer. And here's another way of looking at it. I have never met a great prayer person who's not solid in Christ. I've met all kinds of people that put on good smiles, especially on Sunday morning, but whose prayer lives are weak that are not strong followers of Christ. There's something about our relationship with prayer to God which makes us strong. And it's probably the clearest barometer of the level of our spiritual lives. In this, so intimacy with God is a, is, a, is a priority. And we do it through prayer is the number one thing. And in our next segment, we'll talk about another way to be intimate with God.